Welcome to another exciting Bible study with Rev. Dr. James A. Duncan, pastor of Shiloh Baptist Church. Faith study in the Word is designed to keep you fired up about your walk with the Lord. Fired up about our faith study in the Word with Pastor Duncan, author, teacher, and long-term educator with a burning desire to see every believer live a full life of faith in the redeeming power of God. This can only happen when we develop a hunger and thirst for studying the Word, God's Word. Thanks for joining us in tonight's study. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I'm Pastor Gary Matt here at Shiloh Baptist Church one church in two locations, where the senior pastors, the Dr. Reverend James Allen Duncan. We want to thank you and welcome you all to our evening Bible study broadcast where the theme is, stay fired up about your faith. Can we get a high praise for that? Stay, stop, stay fired up about your praise, amen? We, we want to give honor to God first. I'm going to go into a word of prayer. And um, I just want to also ask you guys to subscribe Watch us Facebook Live. You can probably tune in right now. We welcome you all and say hello to my shallow pastor family, from our senior saints, those in between and out of you. God bless you. Miss you. We're coming back home soon. We're going to be starting, hopefully, March the 21st. We're going to be back in our church where we can worship again and fellowship one with another. Amen. We're going to go right into a word of prayer, and we're going to get right into this exciting message from the Lord. Title, it's time for healing. Amen. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this gathering. Lord, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to be able to share your word on the airwaves, Lord, on Facebook, uh, YouTube Live. Lord, we just thank God for the opportunity. I thank you, Lord, for allowing our pastor, Lord, uh, to be able to be so expressive with the word of God that he teach so diligently and with the power and authority, Lord, and giving us the opportunity to share the word of God as well. Lord, we can't thank you enough, Lord. It is preaching time now. Lord, we pray that you would open our hearts and minds of your people, that they can receive what thus saith the Lord. And all these blessings we ask in your Son, Jesus' name, we pray. Let the body of Christ say amen. Can we give you a praise real quick? Um, I'd like to start out like I did last week. There's a declaration that we have made, and we want to start it today as well. I need you to stand up on your feet right where you are in your home, no matter where you are, uh, unless you drive it, I don't need to stand up. But this is our declaration, man, to all the saints of God. Because it's time for healing right now, we need to declare in our spirit and do a faith move to let God know and also let ourselves know and the world know that we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this declaration goes like this. I need you to repeat that me. I am healed through his word and through the power of God. I am healed through his word and through the power of God. Uh, our supporting scripture is found in Psalms 107 verse 20. It said that he sent his word and healed them. And in chapter 107, it follows, excuse me, 107 verse 20 that leads up to that chapter 1. Uh, it says it's a good thing to give praise and then let the redeemed of the Lord say so. But the main thing I like about it is what we go through life is what David was writing about. How we go through trials and tribulations. Time after time where we make promises unto the Lord and we can't keep our promises. We pray and ask the Lord to deliver us out of some deep and dangerous positions and situations that we were in. And then once we get delivered, we find ourselves right back into the same position again. Uh, being healed. What are we being healed from? We didn't come to talk about no headaches or you know, back aches or stomach aches. We come to talk about those deeply rooted things that affect you from serving your God. The things that affect the man and the woman inside of you that from being influenced, being able to connect with hurting people, or being able to get your point across, or being able to make a difference in somebody's life. Yeah, you go to church. Yeah, you have a title. Yeah, you have a position. But because of that deeply rooted pain that you have been wrestling with, it could be church hurt. Your church hurt is one of those pains. You say, oh, you should better get over it. But some people have been scarred so deeply in church where when they come to try to fellowship or try to worship or come to study and they see somebody that offended them that they thought would help. I'm not saying it's going to go away, but you have to prepare yourself 
for those deeply rooted things that you don't even care to talk about with anybody, then only you can take it to the Lord. My question is, when you take it to the Lord, do you leave it at? Do you leave it at his feet? Those are the type of things we want to talk about that when somebody shows up in the room, it affects your personality, your character, your emotions, feelings. Go, your, your temper goes from a zero to a hundred because somebody showed up in the room that may have hurt you. Those are the deep things that we need forgiveness from. We need healing from. And we always want to talk about, I mentioned this last week, we always want to talk about the, the alcohol and the, the drugs. And, but there are some deeply rooted pains, situations that we go through that leads us to those, to those situations. So I want you to join with me if you would. Um, as we go through this lesson, I'm just going to recap real quick on some things we went over last week. Uh, first week we talked about the urgency of healing. The urgency of healing. We were talking about why do we need to be healed, what are some of the things we need to be healed from. We need to be healed from uh, emotional scars, uh, uh, those traumatizing moments in our life where uh, I mentioned a story about the young man uh, who went to school on career day with his son. And I'm just briefly, I want to go over real quick. Those who didn't hear, you got to get last week's message. And what happened, something happened years ago. He saw his father uh, be killed by the police officer. And it affected so many years later, even when his son was his age. So those deeply things that we thought we dealt with still keep resurfacing this ugly head. And we have to deal with it. And it affects our life today. The man and the woman that you are, it affects who you are. You can't be the real you. You can't even do a complete, uh, full day of happiness because you have this deeply rooted pain. I don't know what it is. You know what it is. But God can heal you from that. Amen? Uh, types of illness. That's what I want to go real quick. This is from the last week. I'm going to go with this, and we're going to jump right into the second week's lesson. Amen? These are some of just the common sickness that we had, allergies, cold and flu, diarrhea, some case. Yeah, we need healing from that. But that's not what I'm talking about today. Diseases that affect your behavior, your, your demeanor, who you are, your character, when you're around people, they can sense that something's wrong. These are some of the things that uh, begin to slowly eat away at your energy, your emotions, and your thought process. These are some of the things that, we, that traumatizes us. And these are the diseases that we get that a diagnosis from the doctor that uh, say you have cancer, you have COVID, and you're on a life support machine. Not life support machine, but, but you're on the oxygen machine. And you, you can struggle for your, your breathing and breath. These are some of the things that we see what's going on in the world, how many people have died from this COVID-19. And what that does is mess with your emotional state, your mental state. These are the things that really causes us to, our emotion tends to be a wreck. Cancer, I hate that word. Yes, I do, I'm gonna say it on camera. I hate it because my mother passed away from it at the age of 46 years old. I was 14 years old. And then they didn't have the medicine and the technology they have today, but she suffered as she went through chemo and um, radiation treatment at the same time. Seeing a mother, pretty stout woman, a beautiful woman, long, beautiful black hair, lose her hair and lose weight till she was real thin. That was very painful for me to watch. And when something like that, when I see other people wrestle with these type of diseases here, and I wrestle with a few of myself, I blood pressure. Yeah, I'm doing some things, I'm working on my body, I'm eating a lot better, trying to make sure I take care of myself. But these are kind of things that affect your emotion and your thought process. You can be in church and then you know that you got another treatment once you leave church and you can't really give God the praise that's due unto the name. I know I'm talking to somebody out there. The things that in our life that the enemy have set before us, those roadblocks, those stumbling blocks, those are some of the things that affect our praise and our relationship with our God. I'm saying no more. That's what we need healing from right now, from the inside out. If God heals your inside, your spirit, man, your soul, it's in agreement and in step with God. There's nothing the devil can't do. There's nothing he can say in your ear or whisper in your spirit that will stop you from giving God 110%. Can I get an amen? 
to deliver his word unto the captain to set them free. And in this instance, in the Old Testament, God spoke through the open heavens. He, he spoke through the selected leaders, men and women, priests and prophets. He spoke through dreams and visions, even through animals. Remember the donkey? Bill? He spoke to Bill. Say, don't you want to go down there? God has used whatever willing vessel he choose to. And I choose to be a willing vessel right now. And I pray that you will open your heart. You will receive something from this lesson. Because I'm an instrument right now for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he's coming for you to set you free. Amen. And he is still today, as long as his son Jesus is the main subject of the matter and the main focus. God is still doing the same thing today. He uses men and women to carry forth his word. This is where I want to start at, in Isaiah chapter 38, verse 1. It said, the title says, God sent his healing word through a prophet named Isaiah to the king Hezekiah. I love this chapter here. It says, in those days, Hezekiah was sick unto death. And Isaiah, the prophet, the man of God, the one God selected, to send forth his word. We talk about spiritual healing here. Came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thy house in order, for thou shalt surely die. Now, Hezekiah is sick. Might have pneumonia, I don't know what it was. But imagine a man of God who you know is walking with the Lord. Come and give you a message that get your house in order because you're going to surely die. That just, just doesn't mess with your physical body. That messes with your mental, emotional, that inward spirit man is erupted once you hear that powerful word delivered to you, to your door. And the only thing that Hezekiah can do, and I pray that you would do the same thing, he was on his sick bed, but he said he turned. He made a move. He done something. He turned his body. And he talked to the Lord. He began to pray unto God and said, Lord, remember what I used to do. Remember when I was healthy. Remember when I was serving you with all my heart and all my soul. Remember when I was in church. Remember when I went and picked up somebody and brought them to church. And felt good about it. And know that it was you that told me to do it. And I was obedient unto you. This is what Hezekiah was praying. Set your house in order. Verse 2 says, then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord. Said, the Lord, remember, I just mentioned that. And it said, he wept sorely. That means he wasn't just crying. He was afraid. He was nervous. His mental state was all right. Have you ever been there? He didn't know which way to turn, but to the wall. And said, Lord, I know you hear me. You need healing from the inside out. And he begun through a prayer. He said, Lord, remember. Maybe you don't have anything to remind God of. Maybe you never done anything that was worth, say, God had stored up. He said, God, can you remember when I done that? Or maybe you were so mentally disturbed by the news you just received that you couldn't even think of. That's what we live at right now. I'm talking to you today saying, God, come and heal you right where you are. He did it for Hezekiah and he'll do it for you. He sent his word. Stop looking at the package that the word comes through and receive the word of God. Hezekiah said, remember the things I have done that was good in thy sight. And he wept. Verse 4, then came the word to Isaiah again. The messenger. He sent his word. He sent his instrument. Told him to turn around. Because I heard the sincerity in Hezekiah's heart. I finally got his attention. Pain. Pain. What, what does pain do? Pain for a believer gets us back in touch and shows us how much we really need God. We really need God in everything that we do. Every aspect of our life. Our jobs and our homes and our marriage and our relationship. We need God desperately. Hezekiah was in a desperate situation. And Isaiah turned around. He was obedient. 
One thing we got to learn how to do, not just to be able to receive the word, we need to know how to be obedient when God gives us instruction to give it to mind. Oh, they might have an attitude. They might not receive it. It doesn't matter. Isaiah turned around. Before he left out of the palace, he turned around. He heard from the Lord, meaning he had spent time with God, meaning him and God had a relationship. And he turned around and he brought the message back and gave his God the blessing he'd been waiting for. Fifteen more years was added on to his life. Is that not something to praise God for? Imagine God restoring some things in your life that was broken. That's what he did for his God. Spiritual attack. All these things listed can prevent or delay you from receiving the sent word of God. If you don't hear anything else, spiritual healing, the sent word of God can change your life. My question is, what have you heard from? What has hurt you? What is your root cause of your pain? You don't have to tell me. Tell God. Because he's waiting for you. Uh, the Bible calls uh, in perilous times. Second Timothy, I love this, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Um, it says, but mark this, this is now be virgin. It says, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. I come to tell you, church, everything that Christ came to do has been fulfilled. We are living in the last days. And if you don't know that now, something is wrong with you. I'm telling you, it's like Isaiah told his God, get your house in order and be in a hurry because we are living in some perilous times. And these are the things that God wanted to show us is happening in these last days. And you're telling me this is not the truth. You can't disagree with it. We see these every day. People will be lover of themselves, lover of money, boastful, proud. Are you in this somewhere? Lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusers, Disobedient to their parents, ungrateful and unholy. These are the days we're living in. Verse 3. Without love, unforgiveness, slanderous, without self-control. Governor asks us to wear a mask. People are choosing not to even wear something as small as a mask to be able to sit. We, we're just doing anything we're big and bad enough to do. And then when we get in trouble, who is the first one we call them to? Lord help us. God help us. Get us out of this. we got to learn how to be obedient and have some type of self-control over our thinking, over our words that come out of our mouth. We'll say something we know is going to offend somebody, and we choose to do it anyhow. Scripture says, when a brother is eating meat, and you're coming over to him, he said, don't eat meat around him because you shouldn't be the one. If you're godly, you shouldn't want to offend your brother or your sister. But we forget those little scriptures that mean so much. And then we fall in this deep temptation of this deep error of hurt and pain where we can't even realize that we've been in so deep that we don't even realize where the pain began. You can't even find the root cause because you done did so much damage. Because you had no self-control. That's a big one. Brutal. Not lovers of good. Treacherous. Rash. Conceited. Lovers of pleasure, conceive Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of God, but denying the power thereof. This is what Scripture says in verse 5. It says, have nothing to do with such people. We find ourselves wanting to connect with these very people that the Lord says stay away from. If they carry these type of characteristics, stay away from them. It can suck you in. Showtime. Following others but not God. Have nothing to do with such people. Don't take on these type of characteristics. Negativity can pull you in and it can drain you. It can suck from you. These are things the scripture tells us to stay away from. It can cause your spirit man to faint. Alright, now we're going to move on to our next one. Faith nourishment. We know that without faith, it's impossible to please God. We know that. We know scripture. But in order to do anything that move God, or for having God in your, have God in your corner, you need to know how to feed your faith. Can you say that with me? Feed your faith. Tell somebody in your home, say, you got to feed your faith. You got to nourish your faith in order to be able to abstain these hard times that we live in. 
just like 2 Timothy chapter 3. You just heard some of the things that we go through. Lovers of ourselves, lovers of money, disobedient, no self-control, brutal, rash, all these different types of uh, illnesses that affect our relationship with God. If you haven't heard anything that I've been teaching over this class, or the one I'm going to teach next week, please get this. It's what you allow to separate you from your God. Romans tells us, Play, let nothing separate. I mean, Romans chapter 8, it said, let nothing separate us from the love of God. Life, nor death, nor any other. No, nothing, no situation, no children, no job, no money. Let nothing separate you from the love of God. Because you're going to need God in every part of your life. Hebrew 11, without faith, oh, excuse me, now faith, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things told for and the evidence of things not seen. We read that, we know that, we heard that, but as saints of God, we don't believe that. Because if we believe that, we wouldn't be crying as much as we are. Mind you, I said these deeply rooted pains, even though you read the word, but if you don't receive the word in your spirit, man, in your soul, your soul is already has a seed in the kingdom. If you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, your soul is right, but your spirit man is the one that's wrestling. That's the one you got to put the word against. You got to put the word on. You got to put your defense mechanism in. And also, you got to turn on the offense. You got to speak to that situation. And you got to trust God by faith. You can't do it without this. I need to hear me like, stop running over the scripture. Look at it, eat it, digest it. Faith is the subject of things hoped for. You can't even see it. But you got to believe that your healing is there. you got to believe that this is not the end. The victory belongs to me. Things hope for the evidence of something. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. They obtained a good report because they believed in somebody who can carry them through any dark time of their life. Any dark time. No money, no food, no place to stay. Psalms, our um, 107, which is our supporting scripture, to leave up to verse 20, saying he sent his word to heal him. But there's a lot that took place from 1 and verse 19. God had gathered his people in Psalms 107, our supporting scripture. I keep saying that because I want you to study that. God joined the people, his people. He, he brought them in from the north, east, south, and west. And he gathered and gave them a place of habitation. A place they could call their home. He gave them everything they needed. And they got complacent. They forgot about God. They turned their backs on God. And what he did, he brought hard labor. He said, through iron and hard work. He, he turned them over because they were disobedient to him. And then it said, the people of God cried out again. Lord, have mercy on us. This is what David was trying to encourage in this text. saying, Oh, that man might praise him. They were saying all that God has done for us, time after time. I'm talking to you right now. Jump out of the Old Testament. Jump into your life. God has brought you out time after time after time. And here we are, keep going back in the same situation. I asked a question last week. What have we learned from the world being shut down with COVID? I'm going to tell you right now, I learned something. First of all, it scared the heck out of me. I've never seen anything like this. I'm 54 years old. I've never seen anything like this in my life after. And it was a wake-up call. But it also made me dig into my word and start studying more and start asking God to help me to understand the times we're living in. The time, and he gave me this. It's time for healing right now. Because we have been missing this. That deeply rooted pain that the people were going through when they felt that they didn't have anything else, God had blessed them in places that they were homeless at one time. They forgot that God gave them a habitation. And in this text, David kept reminding his people over and over again, all that men might praise him. Don't forget of his goodness. They cried out to the Lord, and he heard them. And the Bible said he delivered them out of all their distress. Everything they were going through mentally, God delivered them from over and over again. And guess what? A few verses later, they were disobedient again. I can't stay. I'm going to get back to that later. I'm going to finish this up. 
Back to the faith. The elders received a good report. Faith is an action word. It moves, it has power, it changes things if you operate it correctly. Hebrews 11 says, but without it, but without it, it is impossible to please or move God. Meaning God ain't going to move until you start trusting in him. Whose report are you going to believe? You still run into man when the word of God is right there landing for you. Is it possible? God must believe that he is you. Let me read it again. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. He is. He is. He is the great I am. And that he is the rewarder. Gifts. God give you the blessing. Open doors. Tear down walls. Make a way out of nowhere. Yes, I'm talking about that. My soul looks back and wonder how I got this is what I'm talking about right here. The reward of them that what? Diligently seek him. You got to grab that faith and you got to diligently seek out God. Say, Lord, I'm in a situation right now. I don't understand faith like I should, but I'm going to try this thing out. Lord, I'm going to call those things as not as though they were. Lord, I'm going to dig down deep in my spirit. I'm going to put this spirit to rest. And I'm going to start thinking godly. I'm going to line it with your word. I'm going to do what you call me to do. And Lord, I'm going to trust you. No matter what it looks like. No matter how long it takes. That's the hard part. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. But that's where your faith kicks in. i got to trust in God no matter what. Amen? Faith heals. First heals. First thing. We must identify the root cause. It's just going over what we talked about already from last week to now. You must identify the root cause of your hurt. In order to be healed. In order to be affected. In order to go on and be fruitful. You've got to identify the root cause of your hurt. Second thing. Take it to Jehovah. Can I stop right there? None of this makes sense. If you don't know who God is. God in the Old Testament. Identified himself as Jehovah. A God can heal. If you don't know God can heal you, you're in trouble. Jehovah has established a name, meaning Jehovah, God, your healer. The one that know everything about you. Know you have your aches and pains, your emotion, your, your spiritual man, your flesh, your physical body. He know everything about you. God created you from the dust you came, and the dust you shall return. But your spirit man is going to go on to be with the Lord. Your soul. And God already knew you before you was in your mother's belly. Before you was even thought of, God knew you. And it said he ordained you for a purpose. I'm talking to somebody out there. You have been ordained for a purpose. Yes, this storm has been coming, but it's not over. You can walk through the storm like Jesus did. He walked on the water. You can handle your situation as long as you put God first. As long as you trust in him by faith. Nourishing that faith. The second, third thing is God can use it. Anyone as an instrument. We talked about that with Isaiah. Nourishing your faith. That's where we're already at. Nourishing our faith and believe his word. Fifth thing, demonstrate what we have learned based on how we treat others. The condition of our heart. We have to change our behavior. I want to show you something really real quick. I'm going to read through this. So pray with me. A faith move. Here's another faith move that really blew my mind when I began to read it. It's found in uh, Matthew chapter 8. Talk about the letter. It says, when he, the letter, one letter, not the ten. This is the one letter that came in. It says, and when he came down from the mountainside, a large crowd called Jesus, followed him. And a man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, can you make me clean? So here's a faith move where a leper man came to Jesus. Let me, let me, let me go to the part. Verse 3. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing. He said, be clean. And immediately he was cured of his leprosy. I want to stop right there when I talk about Jehovah. That God that healed him. He heals us physically, mentally, spiritually. Jehovah is the only one that can do that. And when he heals us, he can heal us. He heals us completely. Completely. 
We were talking about the things that cause our spirit to be interrupted and cause us to be ineffective. Well, here's a story. I need you to take a little time and deep. We're going to, we're going to rock down your spiritual imagination. Imagine you were there. This man had leprosy. And he was isolated from his family. Children couldn't even be around his children. Don't know was he married or not, but it doesn't matter. The loved ones, the people he was around. I'm, I'm pretty sure he wasn't born with leprosy. He might have developed it later. But it doesn't matter. Pain is pain. You can't even be around the very ones that birthed you or you grew up with, your siblings. You can't even hang around with the guys you went to school with, the girls you went to school with. You're an outcast. Nobody wants anything to do with you. Now, you got an outward sickness, but think about that inward pain that he was going through. Imagine every time I'm walking around, stuff is dropping off of me. My skin is changing colors. And I smell, and I'm rotting from the, the inside out, and nobody wants to be around me. I can't even walk into the village. I can't even go and get food. They've grown food to me, or I've got to go find it for myself. Everybody had turned it back on me. Do you think this guy or this person, woman, has God on their mind? Maybe for a moment. But call those scars of pain, of being felt like an outcast, an unwanted, an unappreciated. You felt like God had left you. I know he wasn't alone. Some people are feeling like that today. With our young people and how, how the school system with the COVID-19 has changed their life and they got to find loved ones to take care of the kids or to get sign them up for school, make sure they, they're doing their schoolwork online. Very difficult, trying to hold out a job, trying to keep their apartment. Some of them have lost their job. Young people, we haven't forgotten you. Seniors say, we haven't forgotten you, the state you're in, living off of uh, a fixed income, doing the best you can. Still trying to stay safe, can't travel like you want to, can't hug your grandkid, can't see him like you want to. You talking about some serious pain? So I'm pretty sure we can we can take off a hat for a moment and relate to the man that carried leprosy. He was damaged from the inside out. But Jesus, by faith, he did something that was illegal. He came to Jesus. With Jesus coming down from the crowd, he made his way to Jesus. What am I telling you? Lord, help me here. You got to make your way to Jesus like the man that had leprosy. He went against all the rules. By the rules and regulations, the law of the land, he wasn't even supposed to come in that presence around a crowd of people. But he was hurting so bad on the inside that he said, I got to get to it. I don't care what it takes. It might cost me my life. But I need to bow down to him because I know he's the only one that can help me. You've been in church before. You know God is the only one that can help you. And he made his way to Jesus. He said, if you will, can you heal me? Can you get me out of this situation? Please forgive me. Can you get me out of this situation right now? Because I'm hurting. He bowed down and Jesus touched him. And healed him immediately. Not like he did the other ten. But the other ten, he was trying their faith. And seeing only one came back. But this incident, this letter, he was healed immediately of all his pain. Because Jesus is the only one that can heal you from the inside out. Ha! Huh. Better heart condition. David said in Psalms 51, Create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. David was talking from an inward pain. He had seen the blessings of God. He's seen the favor of God on his life. But he also experienced a lot of challenges where he was hunted by from the King Saul, the man that he loved and honored and respected. David had an issue with his flesh, with Bathsheba. David felt godly, sorry, because he was a man after God's own heart. And I, I really took a look at that and wanted to find out what did God mean by David was an apple with eyes, a man his own heart. I believe every incident when David had failed God, or felt like he failed God in man, it said David had a repentant heart. And David must have felt godly sorry for what he did when he arrived. But she was husband. 
And David said, there's something in me that's just not right. Drinking can't take it away. Getting high, doing drugs, or, or whatever you may think you're sex it can't take it away. He cried out to God, just like Hezekiah did. David cried out to God and said, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit, a right one. I don't, I don't want the wrong. I don't have that wrong spirit. Remember that spirit can either join to God or take you. David said, I had the one that was taking me away from you. I need the one that's going to bring me back closer to you. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. In my closing here, we need to get on our knees and begin to call out to the Lord and say, create in us a clean heart. Give me, a, give me a fresh mind so I can start identifying those things in my life that I may have hurt people or wrong, even myself. So I can immediately ask for forgiveness from the inside out. That anger that you get, yeah, I'm talking to you right now. That anger issue that you had, that uh, your loved one told you about it. God told you about it, and you've still been ignored. You have an opportunity right now to get it right with God. That's where you want to heal you from. So when we do enter back into the sanctuary um, on the 21st, and as we begin to grow, people feel safe when we're coming back and to the church fellowship, we can truly give God a praise that's out of this world. Meaning that if anybody rides by on the street, they can feel the anointing of God's presence coming from the praise that is coming from some wounded people that got it right. They got on their knees and said, create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. Lord, I want to be healed from the inside out right now. Lord, I realize we're living in the last days. In these last days, I have a word to say. I have a message to give. I have a story to tell. And I can't tell it under the anointing of the Holy Spirit with all these baggages. Let me un-release some of these hurt that I've been carrying so long so you can set your children free, your grandchildren free. They need to hear what you've been through. We always want to say, ah, oh, they don't need to know that. We can save our children's life if we told them that. You know what? You're acting just like, tell, tell them you're acting like your daddy. Tell them you're acting just like me. Because we got a story to tell and we're afraid to tell them because we've been carrying it in bondage too long. That's what you need. Last thing, and then I'm not too late. Love and spite of. Have a compassion and love, general love for your neighbor. He was feeling unwanted and unloved. But when Jesus Christ healed him, he healed him from the inside out. So the animosity and anger he had towards the ones that, that kicked him out and didn't want anything to do with him. I didn't say it, it's not written in the Bible what happened once he was healed. But I can only imagine when God healed you, and he healed you completely. It says, who the Son has set free is free indeed. When God sets you free, you can forgive those ones that hurt you so bad. Amen? We're closing right now with a word of prayer. Is there anybody out there that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? You have the opportunity right now just to repeat after me. Lord, I confess, I admit that I'm a sinner, but I receive your word today. I believe the man of God and the word of God that came forth and saying, Lord, you can heal every aspect of my life. I believe that God sent his son Jesus to die on my behalf, and I believe that he rose with all power in his hands. And because I can believe, I believe that, I can confess with my mouth that I am saved. I'm no longer a servant of the enemy, but I'm a servant of the most high. If you said that, you're saved. You're in the kingdom. Get under a good Bible teaching. I recommend Shalom Baptist Church and let God begin to build you spiritually so you can become fruitful in these last new days. God bless you. I love you. I'm Pastor Gary Mack, and I'll see you next week. Remember, it's time for healing. Being healed from the inside out.